G'day folks, today I'm going to be teaching you how to catch Murray Crayfish. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now I apologise if the hair's a bit feral, I've been wearing a beanie because it was minus four this morning. It was very cold and we had a white frost, so I've got beanie hair. Anyway, rather than just going and putting nets in and checking them and catching crayfish, a vlog, a video log, this is more of a how-to. I'm going to teach you how to catch crayfish. I'm going to walk you through my process. First of all, I'm going to put my first net in here. Now, the reason that I've chosen this spot, I've never put a net in here before. There's certain things that I look for when I'm crayfishing. I like depth. I like deep water. And deep water is often found below these steep clay banks. I like steep clay banks. They're not the be-all and end-all, but I find that I often have good results under these steep clay banks. Steep clay banks and good water is a winning combination. Now, if I look here, I can see there's a big shallow clay ledge out there. But either side of the ledge, it drops away deep up there and down here. I don't know how deep I'll put my net in. If it's only three or four feet deep, I might uh, only leave it in once. If it's really deep, I might just keep checking it because it'll be, I reckon it'll be a good spot. So first of all, I'm looking for depth and nice steep banks and a backwater out of the current. I don't like to be in too much current when I'm crayfishing. Let's get this net in and see whether it's deep or not. The first thing I like to do is unwind all my cord, put my foot on the float so that when I throw the net in, the whole float doesn't go in if I throw it too hard or the line gets tangled. Then I get my cord and run it backwards through my hand like that so that it's sitting nice and flat so that when I throw it, it doesn't tangle. Now this net's a little bit damaged, I probably should have used a different one, but anyway, it'll be right. it'll still do the job, it's just got a bit of a hole up here. I'm going to grab both hoops and I'm just going to throw it out there on the edge of the current and the edge of the backwater. Is it deep enough? It's dropping, it's still sinking. No, that's deep enough. That's deep enough. Oh, that's still sinking. That's actually very deep. That's a really good spot. I didn't think that it would be. It's not really on a uh, on much of a bend. Steep, sharp, curvy bends often have deep holes. But as I've demonstrated here, sometimes these deep holes can appear on long straight stretches. I really like the look of this net. Right, I've wrapped my cord around this, this stick way up here. Now I'm going to go and find somewhere for my second net. Whose idea was this? Oh yeah, the handrail there. I was just lying off this bank here for my second net. I reckon I could get down to that ledge there where that branch is and throw in from there. But on closer inspection, I don't know whether the camera is picking it up, but there's a couple of big logs in the water. I don't think it looks all that deep. There's a bit of current, there's a lot of snags. I think I'll try and find somewhere else. Now I found a spot here that looks okay, doesn't look ideal, it's a sort of a mediocre kind of a spot. As long as there's depth, I think it will be okay. Now I'm on a bit of a sandbar here, I can see it's not a steep bottom, so I'm going to need to throw the net as far as I can. And that's where I really like these wire bottom nets. A few people have suggested to me lately that these may be illegal. I've had a look on the Victorian Fisheries, uh, the Vic Fishing app and the website, and I can't see any reason why they would be illegal. And I have been inspected by fisheries a couple of times using these and I haven't raised any concerns. So these are the best for throwing out far and because they don't have a steep bank, I'm going to have to throw it out as far as I can and hope that it's deep. Still sinking, still there's a bit of depth. Yeah, it's... Yeah, look, it's not the best. I'll give it one go there and see how that goes. I'd like it to be a little bit deeper. I haven't got the steep banks. And I haven't got as much depth as I'd like, but it is a nice calm backwater. I'd rather have my nets over that side, and that's where a boat comes in handy, along the bottom of that clay bank over there. But I'll give it one go here and see how that goes. Take it from there. Right over here, I've got the steep clay banks. Hopefully it's deep. I'm just going through the, the untangling cord process. This is what I said earlier. I've unraveled it. Now I'll lay it back on top of itself to ensure that it doesn't tangle when I throw it out. Righto. Do we have depth? In case I didn't mention it earlier, I'm using chicken drumsticks for bait. Three in each net. Do we have depth? Still going down. Not as deep as I thought it would have been, but I reckon it will be okay. I just hope that it's not too snaggy. Cray nets and snags are the losing combination. 
Well, net number four over here looks like a pretty good spot for it. I'm on the same bend as net number three, which is just there, but I'm just downstream a little bit. Right, oh, net number four. That's a better throw. Hopefully, it's not too far from the edge, as long as it's deep. Oh no, 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 no! Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh! No, 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 no! Please be a stick somewhere. And you hit a little one. If I don't get this, I'll never get it back. It'll end up way out there in the middle of the river. I'm gonna get it, look, 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 look. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Quick thinking by the cray fisherman saved his net. I stuck a stick in the ground here to secure that float. I don't have the highest expectations of that net, but it's worth a try. Now you may remember this spot. Of all the, I'm putting five nets in today, and of all the five nets, this is the only one that's uh, going in somewhere where I've crayfish before, and that was only once. This is where I was with Holly recently. I left that net up there out and totally forgot to put it back in, and the net down here, the bait wasn't tied in properly. What a disaster! <laughs> right now, I've walked you through pretty much everything that I can think of to help you catch a crayfish. Just to recap, I like steep banks if possible, I like deep water, and just to be off the edge of the current. Sometimes you can get all three of those ingredients, sometimes you might only get one or two. Right, net number three, and go just out there. You can crayfish off sandbars, I enjoy crayfishing off sandbars, but you need a steep sandbar, and the wire bottom nets are better because they're easier to throw when you're craying off sandbars. Anyway, it's been about 25 minutes since I put the first net in. I'm going to drive back up to that first net now and then check all the nets. I'm back at the first net. The net's still here, so that's a start. <laughs> of the five nets that I've put in, I reckon this one's in the best spot. This is the one that I've got the most faith in. It's been about 40 minutes since I put them in. What's the call? It's heavy. There's one in here. And, I was right, but it's not big enough to make the net heavy. It's only a little one. Oh well. It's only a small crate, but guess what? I'm on the board. I knew this spot would have crayfish in it. Had there not been any crayfish in this net, I would have left it here. I just like the look of this spot. I've got faith in this spot. Now, net number two, if there's nothing in this net, oh, I don't know, I might give it one more go here if there's nothing in it. I'm not, this is my least favour of the five nets. Not as deep as I'd like it to be. It doesn't feel heavy. I don't think there's anything in it. No. You know what? I'm going to move it. I'm going to I'm going to make the call now. I'm not liking this spot. If, if all else fails, I'll put it where the last net is, where I crayfished with Holly recently. It's deep, it's steep-sided. I just like the look of that spot, and I know there's craze there. Right, net number three. This is the one that's most likely to be snagged, I reckon. How does it feel? It was on a snag, not very deep. Mm. I'm not feeling it here a lot either. I'll give it one more try, although I felt snags down there, which is a concern. I'll throw it out a bit further. See if that helps. Net number four. Doesn't feel very heavy. Oh, there's one little one. One little one. Oh, one little one is better than no crayfish. I'll put that one little one back, of course. Gee whiz, they get tangled in these nets. So far I've got two little ones. It's been a little bit slow. But that's okay, it's only the first check of the nets. They'll stay in a bit longer this time. Make sure I'm standing on the rope this time. That was a disaster last time. 
Right now, I've made my way to this uh, this spot here where the infamous net mishap happened in a cray fishing video with Holly, with Holly recently. I checked my net, caught a few crays, yeah, all excited. Then I left my net on the bank. Anyway, I know this is a good spot. I know there's crayfish here. See how we go. Right, this is the fifth net. How does it feel? Is it heavy? Not really. Maybe one little one is my call. Oh, it's a bit heavy. Oh yes, we've got a big one. Oh, I might even have a keeper here. I think I might have a keeper. I reckon that's a keeper. Oh, yeah. I've got a bloody keeper, right? Unless it's got eggs. It hasn't got eggs. It hasn't got eggs. I reckon I've got a legal crayfish here. I'll get my measurer. I've got my Mr. Carpet measurer. That was given to me by my friend Matt Thurling, Mr. Carpet. Right, there's the 10. It's under that. There's the 9. It's over that. That is spot on smack bang in the middle of the legal size. Folks, I've got a keeper. And my bucket's in the car. <laughs> I'll throw it back in really quick. Oh, I've got a keeper. Right, high speed net throw. Get tangled in all that cord, mate. Right. Quick, quick. <laughs> oh, I've got a keeper. Uh. Check this out. You can see there, that's the minimum. Hang on, he's moving a bit. That's the minimum at the top of the screen. That's the maximum at the bottom. And you can see the carapace there right in the middle. Perfectly legal crayfish. Awesome. And of course, that's in season and it's got no eggs. Got a bit of a breeze starting to pick up. We meant to get a little bit of rain tonight. Right, this one, this net had one little one in it before, and I reckon it's got nothing in it now. It doesn't feel heavy. No, I'm going to leave it there though. I just like the look of this spot. Right, I might just throw just out here a little bit. Maybe not as far out. See if the, oh, that's not. And I'm still sinking. I'll try there a bit closer to the bank. It's not much closer, but it's a little bit closer. Now this was snagged last time. This net. Hopefully it's not this time. It was only just on snags. It wasn't completely snagged. It's not snagged, but it doesn't feel very heavy either. I'm going to move this now. I'm just not feeling it. Not feeling it with this one, so I'm going to move it somewhere else. This net had a little one in it last time I checked it. What's the call? It doesn't feel very... I reckon there's nothing in it. Oh, here one little two. That was a bad call. One of them might even be a legal crayfish. That was a really bad call. <laughs> if that hasn't got eggs, it might be legal. This one here is undersized. Yeah, there's nothing in it. And it's my first daily double of the day. There's no eggs. That's excellent. Run a little one. There we go. Nice size one with no eggs and an undersizer. Chuck a backer. Let's get a, a measurementation on this one. I reckon it's going to be close. Look at that. It's over. It's, over. it's, it's legal. It's a legal cray. I've bagged out. I've got me bag limit. Oh, I have. I've got a bloody keeper. Right? You beauty. I have got my bag limit of crayfish and I'm excited. I'm going to throw the nets back in and then just give them one more check for a fun. Then I'm going to go home and have a cook up. Awesome. Stay there for a minute. Don't you go anywhere. I'm excited. And this is the net that I moved. It doesn't look all that deep, but we'll give it a try. I've got nothing to lose. I've already got my bag limit anyway. Actually, I've got something to lose. If it's snaggy, I can lose the net. I oh, know that's dropping away a bit. That's quite deep, actually. Oh, that might be a good spot. There's only one way to find out, and that's through trial and error. I reckon there'll be a cray in this net. My guess is two before I even lift it. 
I'm revising that down to none. It feels light, but then I said that last time. Look. Ta-da! One. It got eggs? It hasn't got eggs. I think it will be undersized, but even if it is legal size, it's no good to me because I caught my bag limit. I caught one here in this very spot with holly recently, and I said it had a bit of a purple hue, like a purple colour to it, and this has too. Oh, it's right on size. It's got a bit, I wonder if it's the same one that I caught with holly that day. You can see it's just got a bit of purple colouring to its forehead there. Oh, well. Purple Cray. See you later, mate. I might call that song Prince after one of the greatest songs ever written by Prince, Purple Rain. Love that song. This is the net that I caught that legal cray in before. Before I do, I'm puffed. I'm going to sit down and catch my breath and I'm going to tell you a funny story. The pastor from a church in Wangaratta, he didn't want to go to church one Sunday. He thought, I'm going to ring in sick. I'm going to chuck a sickie from being a pastor and I'm going to go and play golf. And he drove miles away, he drove right up to, to Mildura to play on a course where no one would recognise him. And he goes out on the first tee, and he goes whack, a huge big wind come, wind gust comes up from behind him, pushes his ball an extra 100, 150 metres for a hole in one on a par 4, 350 metres long. And the, up in heaven an angel looked at God and said, well, what did you do that for? And God said, well, who's he going to tell? <laughs> Anyway, let's check this net and see if there's any crayfish in it. <laughs> and the call is one. One big one. It feels heavy. <laughs> one little one. I'm certainly not on top of my game with calling the size of crayfish like that pastor was with his hole in one on a big long par four. Come on, mate, let go. Let go. Let go. Thank that bottom of me foot. He's got me shoelace. That could be a bit sketchy. <laughs> Giant spiky yabby. That's not a yabby, it's a crayfish. I shouldn't say that because people actually get confused, especially people that watch my videos from overseas. Yabbies, that's about as big as they get. Sometimes a little bit bigger, but that's, that'd be a very big yabby. And they don't have spikes. You get them in stale, manky water and you get them in the warmer months. Crayfish have got spikes, they come out when it's cold and you get them in clear, flowing water with lots of oxygen in it. Two totally different things. I don't think I've ever caught a yabby as a bycatch while I've been crayfishing. They are in these rivers, you catch them in shrimp nets in the summer, but I've never had one turn up in a cray net in the winter. Righto, all five nets are back in. How I haven't lost a net to a snag is beyond me. It's, it's a miracle. But I've already caught my bag limit. I'm not catching lots of crayfish. I haven't caught any big ones with eggs or any oversized males, but I have got my bag limit and I'm really happy about that. So the next time I check them, I'm going to take the bait out and pull the nets out. So the next check will be the final check. Now, this is a tutorial video. It's a how-to video and I'm going to give a few tips. The three best tips I can give you, look for steep banks, real steep sides, deep water under those steep banks and try and get off the current into a bit of a backwater. So depth, steep sides and a bit of just off the edge of the current. They're my three tips. They're not golden rules and there's always going to be exceptions to the rule. You might catch one in shallow water or something, but, but they're the rules that I try and stick to. They're the areas that I look for. I hope you're finding these tips useful. Let's wait an hour and then go and check the nets for the last time and take the bait out. It's time for the final check of the nets. This is the net that I had the most hope in, but it's only caught one crayfish. Might be one on it now, is it? Oh, one on the outside. Look at that. That's almost a legal size cray. 
He was just, I don't know if he was just on his way in or on his way out. <laughs> my phone's in my pocket, you might be able to hear a couple of funny noises. I've got my bag limit, so this one can uh, can go back. Look at that, it's, yep, it's comfortably legal. Oh yeah, well over the minimum. Well over the minimum, well under the maximum. Would you look at that, eh? I've already got my bag limit, which is two. Look at no eggs. I've already got my bag limit, bag, bag limit of two. So this one can go back. See you later, mate. He gone. I knew this would be a good spot. I just knew it. Anyway, I'll uh, untie these drumsticks, throw them in the river for the other crayfish to eat, for, for that one to eat and get bigger and for the smaller ones to eat. Then go and check the other nets. Well, I haven't caught a lot of crayfish today. I haven't pulled up the net and had four big ones in it. I haven't caught any oversize or any with eggs. But I've caught three comfortably legal crayfish on one that was right on the minimum legal size. It's been quite a successful day. Check that out. I might be able to throw these crayfish back and go home with a feed of Scotch fillet steak instead. <laughs> moo. 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 I'm going to make a bold claim now and say that I've got four more nets to check. I'm going to catch five more crayfish before this video is over in these four nets. That's a bold claim. There's something in this for sure. Two in here. Whoa! I said I was going to catch five more. There's four of them. <laughs> Would you look at that? There's four crayfish in that net. I might have to revise me. Uh, Cows always bring me good luck. I've said it before on my channel when I've been fishing. The cows bring me good luck. There's the evidence. Would you look at that? Look, I think I've scared them with my excited voice. Either that or I scared them when I was talking about uh, keeping one for a feed of steak. Of course, I'd never do that because somebody obviously owns them, but that was a joke. Wrap your life and gear around that. If that hasn't got eggs, I reckon that's another legal one. That one's a possibly a legal one. That one's undersized. I reckon that one's undersized. Right, let's have a quick look. Right. <laughs> oh, that one's undersized. I'm just going to say that's undersized because I know it is. This one's... No, that one's got eggs. First one today with eggs. Try and get down a bit lower. See you later, love. Throw in tail first if I can because they wrap their tail up to protect their eggs. As soon as I picked it up, I thought, that one feels quite heavy. That's what I said, it's heavy, there's something in here. I thought I said one big one. I wasn't expecting four. Oh, will you just let go? They are so difficult to handle. Right. No, that's undersized for sure. Oh. No eggs. We'll call it an undersized, right? And that one there, that's actually oversized. That's a legal size cray. No, it's not, it's just under. It's just under. Oh, she's got eggs anyway. Right. Now, love, if you'll just let go of that claw, that cord. What if I grab this one? Maybe you'll let go with the other one. Maybe if I let go like that. Do they have difficult things to handle? Maybe if I can just lower the cord down to the water. She might let go right down near the water, then I won't have to drop her in. There she goes. Beauty. Four in the ice. I just said, I've just finished saying, I'm going to make a bold call. I'm going to say and say I'm going to catch five in the next four nets, and I've already caught four of them. <laughs> I'm just untying the bait. There's not much of that drumstick left. They've really chewed that to bits, haven't they? <laughs> that one's still quite intact because it was under the wire. I forgot to say goodbye to these cows. Moo! 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 I'm actually... Ugh, nearly fell over. I'm actually feeling quite... Moo! 
improved after that last experience getting four in the one net that was utterly awesome and i've got one i said i was going to catch five more well i've caught them all i've caught five since i said that there's never crayfish in this particular Dude, that's almost a legal cray again all right is that legal i reckon that is you know yep that's a legal crayfish it's only just Dave, I reckon it's probably about 103 or 104, but it's comfortably legal. I would have no hesitation keeping that if I wanted to. What an awesome crayfishing day I'm having. See you next time, mate. All right, time for the second last net. This is the net that I caught Prince in before, the one with a bit of purple on him. I think it's empty. No, I've got one. So I said I'd catch five in the last check of the last four nets. And I've caught six already, and I've still got one net to check. I reckon that's either. I reckon that's just under size. My guess is that that one's going to be about 95 millimetres or so. Go on. Including the first net that I checked on the last check of the nets, if that makes sense, I've caught one, five, six, seven. I've caught seven just in the last round of the nets. Isn't that amazing? And this feels heavier, there's two in it, I reckon. Yeah, I was spot on. I reckon that might be the first time today I've actually made the right call. Two little ones. So I caught nine crayfish just in the last round of four of the nets, five nets. They're both under size. That's good. Good to see diversity. Some with eggs, some under size. There goes one. <laughs> Look at his mouth. He's got a dirty great, oh, dirty great big bit of chicken hanging out his mouth. <laughs> Look at that, it's a crisis time, he's being caught, he's facing death, he doesn't know he's not, but he still won't let go of the meat. Look at the big bit of chicken hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> cray cray, crazy crayfish. I set out this morning to teach you everything you need to know about how to catch Murray crayfish. Hopefully I've been successful. Now you'll need to do a little bit of homework yourself to find out where to go. Do some reading, find out where the crayfish are. A great reference point is the Victorian Fisheries Handbook or Guidebook. And while you're there, make sure you're up to speed with the rules. The rules vary a lot from state to state and they're quite complex. But once you get there, hopefully I've taught you how to catch the crayfish. Thank you all very much for watching.